next panel discussion for the day. The topic for this panel discussion is quite the interesting one. The topic and focus is the advent of artificial intelligence, AI, and the ways it is shaping consumer experience. I'd like to invite our panelist, Atipriya Sarabat, Vice President, Brand, Communication and Corporate Citizenship, Pfizer. Can we have a round of applause for the lady? Welcome. Please welcome Priya Patankar, Head of Communication, PhonePay. And of course, our final Panelist Riddhi Agarwal, Head Brand, Marketing and Communications, Delivery. Please join us, ladies. Thank you very much. And of course, with a huge round of applause, please welcome the moderator for this particular session, Shabasti Malik. You've got chits and all. Uh, yeah, I'm audible. Uh, thank you all for joining me. Uh, on this wonderful afternoon at the E4M Women Achiever Awards and Summit. Uh, we have with us uh, Atipriya Sarawat. Uh, she is the VP and Brand Communications and Corporate uh, Citizenship for FISERV. Thank you. <laughs> we have uh, Priya Patankar, the Head of Communications for PhonePay. And we have Adip Riddhi Agarwal, uh, Head and Brand Marketing and Communications for Delivery. Uh, so the topic for uh, this session is the advent of AI and the way it is changing uh, consumer experiences. As we know, AI is not, not something that is new. It's been there for quite some time and it has been affecting and easing us in, in our daily lives all this time. So I would like to start, my first question would be, how has the advent of AI changed the world of PR and communications? And I would like to start with Ms. Rawat. Sure. Uh, thank you for that question. And uh, I think principally, you know, fundamentally, if you think about AI, it's basic, in, you know, the basic intent of AI is its ability to, you know, convert hu uh, human language through process into something that we all are able to understand, you know, by identifying preferences, by identifying habits, patterns, and all of that, right? And we, in turn, are able to use that and leverage that to be able to make, you know, very targeted communication or marketing strategies or even products that are specific to audiences. When I come specifically thinking about the public relations and communications industry, um, you know, my, my, the first thing that comes to my mind is how can we streamline, you know, routine workflows? I think that is like one, one big piece, especially in today's time when productivity of employees and associates has become such a big talk point, right? Um, I mean, I remember days and I don't know how many of you would remember sitting here that we used to come to office and this is like good 15 plus years back. We used to come to office and we used to actually physically track newspapers, right? We used to track newspapers, we used to identify our news, client news, and then, you know, paste it on a sheet and fax it to a client. I mean, that's like eons back. I'm, I'm hoping that is not something that happens anymore, right? So how can you do that? And then there are obviously the re very regular things like, you know, social listening, getting good insights on your consumers and stuff like that, that have been, you know, uh, pretty regular, I would say, in the past couple of years, you've seen a lot of uh, communication campaigns that have actually addressed that part. But if you ask me specifically that are there any really solid use cases of uh, PR really leveraging AI or communication, and this is like, this is my view, it's Atipriya's view, I haven't seen any, I'll be very honest about it, I haven't seen anything very, very solid and compelling. Um, you know, for example, what I would want to learn and understand is that how can we leverage predictive analytics to be able to preempt a crisis for a client? I mean, I don't think that's something we've evolved in at all. Or probably, you know, um, if I think about measurement, you know, can AI help us create new frameworks for measuring what we do in public relations, right? I mean, I think those are, the opportunities are huge. There is a lot of progress that we've made, but I think that, uh, it requires a little more uptake and a lot more investment from our part as an industry. Okay, thank you. Uh, Priya, if you would like to weigh in. 
So I'd be echoing some of your thoughts. I think I agree. Uh, it's actually, uh, there are three advantages which I largely see. One, of course, is uh, uh, it's automated a lot of the BAU stuff, busy work, as we PR folks would call it. Uh, there's less of busy work, the paper cutting is gone, uh, your, uh, your team is actually usefully employed and gainfully employed. The intern is not sitting and cutting creams of paper any longer. They're actually uh, probably thinking of stories which we can pitch. The other is uh, social listening and uh, digital trends are uh, available in a shape and form in which we can easily consume them. We can figure out what's really going on with our brands. My brand is a digital, only digital first brand. So uh, those things do become important for us. Um, I think uh, on the third one, uh, since I was also managing CRM for PhonePay till last year, and when I started managing for, uh, CRM initially, you know, a lot of the uh, uh, target groups we used to create used to be uh, manually created. We'd stitch them together. But with time, uh, when we started using AI and ML signals, what I realized was we were actually able to target very specifically with very specific attributes, but that's not PR. We were actually sending uh, customers a lot, communication which was a lot personalized because we knew a lot more about them. The machines were getting more intelligent with the kind of campaigns we were sending. I'm hoping some of that learning can also flow in PR eventually because one of the questions even the business teams ask us is rather than a spray and pray approach can be micro target have specific segments who are being sent out to communication and start measuring it more i think uh, one thing which we are not held to accountable for as pr professionals is measurement what what exactly did happen now that the press release has gone out and enough people have saw uh, have seen it so i think Possibly some of those insights can start flowing when we are uh, micro-targeting and looking at smaller campaigns. That's the hope and that's the direction we'd go into, hopefully. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Agarwal, if you'd like to have your thoughts on the same. Thanks. And I do echo a lot of, I mean, sentiments my colleagues have already shared here. Uh, you know, I mean, I think uh, I see AI helping peer and communications widely. From, you know, I see AI helping peer in communications, you know, from targeting your consumers better. I mean, more from a marketing perspective and using AI to use PR and communications as a stronger marketing tool to reach your audience, right? Uh, because obviously, as you already mentioned that, you know, we can tailor made, um, you know, tailor made content and tailor made messaging to reach a target audience. I think so that should be the way to go. Having said that, a stronger use case, I mean, I'm yet to come across. Social listening um, is definitely helping us, you know, uh, target our audience uh, better. Okay, thank you. Uh, so the very gradual next question is, how does AI create value for customers? Uh, be it a target audience, be it a customer that you are approaching or your target audience? Um, so look, um, I mean, any one of us sitting in this room, even, I mean, we all are consumers in some way or the other as well, right? So I think customer and consumer is king. And uh, I wouldn't only restrict it to AI, honestly, I will, I will say digital technologies, uh, more emerging technologies. So it's not necessarily, a, I mean, AI, ML, blockchain, DLT, you know, RPA, there's so many other technologies that come together, which are creating experiences that are genuinely meaningful for customers, it's driving stickiness in the, you know, with, with between brands and their customers and how that association wants to, you know, take it forward. Um, if I think about, uh, you know, uh, examples like which come immediately to my mind, you know, like, I mean, chatbots is something we've all seen. Even I mean, it's the most common piece with even online shopping, you get somebody asking you, what are you looking for? May I help you and stuff like that, right? Uh, you look at business development, the fact that AI gives you the opportunity and the ability to validate leads before it goes to the sales team is a huge, uh, you know, uh, uh, it's a huge advantage for the sales team that you're actually working on something that might actually convert rather than, you know, going helter skelter. Um, if I talk about my own organization at Pfizer, we basically, you know, have made it possible for financial institutions, FIs, and their consumers to actually literally speak to data. 
So it's as basic as a consumer walking in, having, not walking in really, but a consumer asking, you know, financial queries to a digital assistant and getting responses right there and then. I mean, it can be as basic as that and how you basically, you know, stitch that up for the entire consumer journey. And, you know, honestly, I won't stop there because we've been, um, you know, molecule to think in a manner that it's all about consumers, but you think about it, how can these emerging technologies actually help us and, you know, especially folks who are on the corporate side to engage their employees, right? I mean, if you think about it, they are a big stakeholder when it comes to organizations as well, right? So right from starting from how you are acquiring your talent, you know, what are the markets you're actually going to, or probably how are you engaging them or how are you onboarding them and how are you doing that entire journey? You have to just see it from a perspective of a journey, whether it is a consumer journey or an employee journey. And you know, what kind of technologies you can actually bring in to be able to create those experiences which are really sticky, which really drive you know, brand value. Thank you. Uh, Priya, if you would like to weigh in. Yeah, so how is AI helping uh, us? It autofills most of my uh, Google emails these days. So when I start typing, it has it suggests what should I be saying next. So I think there are so many ways. Uh, uh, it, it When I'm shopping on Flipkart, I get personalized recommendations. Netflix is telling me what should I be watching next? What should I be watching when my heart is broken and when, when I want to be celebrating? So I think it's these the personalization and recommendation which AI is bringing in is something we've started accepting and probably not even realizing. Uh, on a serious note, when I talk about my own brand, I think uh, much like uh, Adri Priya spoke about, uh, over time, what we've been able to do is personalize the um, journey for a consumer on the app, because it's not a one size fits all. After you download an app, right, uh, your journey on the app is very different versus though it's a digital payment app and it's, uh, of course, a util utilitarian service. But the point at which you want an intervention is very different from uh, probably the next customer. I'll give you an example. We all pay our bills at different times of the month. But if there is a notification which comes when you need it, it, it's, uh, it just improves your experience. It nudges you to do the next thing. Um, uh, if, if I don't own a bike insurance and if you're sending me notifications or communication around that, it means nothing. I'll, I'll tell you another funny story. There was a brand which used to send me shaving product uh, notifications every single day. I laughed at uh, about it for a month and then I just I uh, uninstalled the app. I was done. There was no way I wanted any more of those. So I think over time, uh, you, you'll see less of these oops moments and uh, you'll, you'll see a more uh, personalized touch when it comes to uh, talking and en engaging with your customers. And AI and ML are definitely game changers when it comes to that. Thank you. Agarwal, Mr. Agarwal, how do you think that AI can create value? Other than the points covered here already, I think AI is uh, definitely driving social commerce to boost sales, right? So that is uh, one of the big trends. Uh, you know, which is again governed by understanding your customer better and uh, personalizing content. But having said that, you know, so that is the large, uh, that's a big trend in the industry right now. From a B2B standpoint, given the industry that we are in, I mean, how AI is really enabling us is to drive uh, better engagement, higher qualifications and onboarding and retention. So the entire, you know, really mapping the entire customer journey. Okay, thank you. Ms. Rawat, you mentioned a while ago that you are yet to see AI being integrated completely into every aspect of PR, like you said about uh, crisis mitigation and how AI can aid into that. So if you could tell me the ways that uh, how AI and machine learning can improve uh, customer experience strategies. Okay, <laughs> so um, look, I mean, I, I personally think uh, consumers, like any one of us sitting in this room, are actually looking for connected experiences, right? And I'm, I'm genuinely, you know, coming from the payments and fintech industry, you are seeing a very gradual and a very obvious shift 
from siloed experiences to connected experiences. And that's where the need for omni-channel you know, uh, experiences really comes into being. So think about it, right? I mean, for example, a person is actually viewing a product on his smartphone, but he wants to be able to say, go to a store and actually physically see the product and then probably go somewhere else and do a QR payment and then go somewhere else and pick up the product, right? The entire uh, inflection point between digital experience and physical experience is blurring more and more as we go through this whole evolution with the, the more integrated and the more seamless this uh, you know interaction and experience is made, that much more advantage you know consumers and customers will have at their hand. Um, I mean, imagine this you know uh, say I want to go with my husband uh, to an Italian restaurant. I mean, if I'm imagining I should go with somebody else, but uh, <laughs> imagine that I'm going to an Italian restaurant for, for dinner. What is my expectation, right? I mean, I, I want that I should have a reservation, probably a customized, you know, recommendation for a menu, my ability to be placed and to place an order before I get to the restaurant, right? Uh, then the whole experience at the restaurant, then loyalty rewards, and then probably making a frictionless payment. So you just see how that entire journey starts at online, goes to physical and goes back onto online, right? It's how these connected experiences can really make a difference in how uh, you know, brands really drive their marketing strategies for consumers. Thank you, uh, Mr. Avad. Uh, Priya, if you would like to... So I think you've made a pitch for all of us to go to an Italian restaurant now. <laughs> I was imagining pizza. <laughs> so I think uh, one thing... I was imagining George Clooney. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I think one thing which I uh, think AI has made a huge difference in, and I've personally seen that is uh, chatbots. Earlier when you were talking to a bot, it was, it was a frustrating experience because occasionally when you were asking a question, you were being answered something you hadn't even asked. And it was not really solving your problem. But now, if you look at it, the, uh, uh, the experience is so seamless that there are times you don't even realize that you're not talking to a human being. It's just gotten so much smarter over, I think, zillions of transaction, uh, at least in our case, information which flows in. The second step also is, you know, um, there is a predictability in terms of when you will need help. The aha experience in my head is that you're helping me before I know I'll need help. There is just a question mark which says, which knows people will get stuck at this point and it will help. Yeah. So it it will just make your experience so much more superlative. Yeah, thank you. Um, Mr. Gawal, if you would like to have your thoughts. Yeah, I think um, more on the chatbots, 24-7 uh, customer support and extending 24-7 customer support has been possible, you know, because of AI. And um, so I think that's definitely an area, you know, which has driven strong customer experience, uh, empowering different brands. Uh, the second area, I mean, obviously streamlining different processes, um, you know, uh, unbiased decision making, uh, and, you know, reducing scope for error across, um, across communication. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, Before you yes. ask your next question, I just wanted to add to something, you know, you both said about chatbots. I mean, if you think about it, NLP as a technology, the fact that it can actually decode human, uh, decode, you know, la human language spoken or written uh, just as thought, just that itself makes such a lot of difference in terms of how things are being interpreted. They're improving. Exactly. <laughs> So with the talk of AI and any discussion with AI comes the next gen of digital transformation, which is the metaverse. It's the latest buzz one in town. And most brands and agencies and companies are uh, taking advantage or utilizing the metaverse to promote their products or their services. What do you think, um, how, in what ways do you think the metaverse and its applications can be used across industries? Uh, Mr. Rawat? So, um, look, it's as for me, it's as simple as where your client is or your organization is or your audience is, communications and PR needs to be there, right? So metaverse for me is just another channel. I think we have, as an industry, moved away from, I mean, we've not moved away exactly, but earned media has become a very small part of everything that we do.
example, say of a bank, right, which say offers services um, in the metaverse. And uh, as a consumer, I go, I engage with and, uh, you know, say an Avatar uh, advisor, I, you know, talking about my financials and I walk out of that appointment and I go to the ATM next door, I insert my pin, I get money in my digital wallet and I go to the next door, you know, handbag store and I buy a virtual handbag. Just think about the number of brands just in this small transaction of me going there, doing the ATM bit, doing the pin, doing the digital wallet and the brand handbag that I've bought. There's so many brands just involved here and each of them has an opportunity for communications or PR to be able to do targeted messaging, right? So the opportunity is massive. There is no, um, there's nothing contesting that. But I think, you know, before that, I want to take like two steps back and just think about the fact that, you know, when Web 1 came into India, it was late 90s. And then you had Web 2, which was early, you know, 2012, 2015, around that time. And both the times, India was a follower. It had already evolved and reached some stage globally, right? And we were just like getting our act together on it. With Web3, we are evolving at the same speed as the world is. Look at our look at our startup ecosystem, right? I mean, like the number of firms that are actually offering services specifically for brands to be able to create strategies for the metaverse is huge. I mean, they are they are organization like Drumworks and there's Meta Metaform, which only do this. I think on our part as uh, you know, PR and communication professionals, we have to be able to have an open mind to engage more with our ecosystem and you know, build those partnerships and collaborations to get those domain expertise in because that is really going to be able to drive that extra value that you want to be able to provide to your clients. That said, just last point, um, whether it's metaverse or it is a newspaper or it is any other channel, there are two things to my mind that will always be fundamental for any communication or a PR or a brand professional is content. It will continue to be king, whether you're telling a story or you're creating an infographic. And the second piece is going to be, it's always about the experience. It's always about that experience you leave at that touch point. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Rawat. Uh, Priya, if you would like to weigh in with I think thoughts. she's pretty much said it all. There are just three things that quickly I'd like to add. The first time I heard of Metaverse was, I think there was a Metaverse wedding happening in Metaverse and there were a thousand people attending. We all heard of it during the lockdown uh, and people were choosing their avatars to attend the wedding from all over the world. So I, I mean, uh, it, it just completely, <laughs> I felt like a boomer at that moment when I realized, okay, there's an alternate reality here. What I do, do realize is that from telling the story, Metaverse will make us live the story. And that does come with a bit of responsibility. Extremely excited about it, but uh, two things. One, the rules of engagement right now uh, in this virtual world, which is opening up, are not very clear. We need to also think a little about that. And as brands, how do you protect your reputation in something so intangible? So it's, it's also going to be interesting for us as PR professionals. We'll keep us on our toes, trust me. Thank you, Priya. Uh, Ms. Agarwal, if you would share your thoughts on this. Yeah, just to add on to both of them. Uh, I think for me, metaverse is really, you know, a shift from storytelling to story living, right? You know, moving on from the flat interaction on social media to a more immersive augmented reality, yeah. right? Having said that, how that really imbibes for our brand is yet to be explored. I mean, the immense possibilities and it does look very lucrative, especially to target Gen X, I mean, Gen Z, yeah. But you know, how does that uh, experience really work for brands like us? I think it's yet to be. Yeah, and true. if you just think about it, you said Gen X, Gen right? Z. Gen Z. Gen yeah, Z, I mean, yeah. Yeah, it's very confusing now. <laughs> exactly, which generation yeah. you're talking the about. The generation. <laughs> yeah, I know, Gen you said boomer as well. So <laughs> I'm just wondering where yeah. we said, but just to think about what you said, right? Uh, gamification, for example, is such a big deal. And I think yeah. Metaverse is just the right place where you can actually do something like that, even if it's just for your employees or your customers. Yes, uh, I think we're at the end of our session. So I'll just quickly wrap up on how you feel the future of AI should look like. 
what do you envision for the future of AI in your respective industries? Uh, Mr. Rawat? Three words, accessible, secure, and seamless. Thank you. Uh, Priya? I think for me, it should be a mind reader. I mean, that's all is left, right? It's yeah. already filling in my emails for me. So yeah, uh, I mean, a robo version of me. That's how I think of it. Uh, Ms. Agarwal? Um, accessible as an easy, accessible, and enabling customers, enabling customer journey. Okay. Thank you so much, ladies, for joining me on this uh, session. It was really insightful, and I'm sure going out back with a lot of thoughts. Uh, thank you so thank much you. for hosting us. Thank you, everyone.